Welcome to the Better Half Show. My name is Godman Akinlabi, PG to my friends. On this episode, we're looking at singleness and sexuality. Uh, the extreme state of horniness, which you know, leads to sexual urges, uncontrollable sexual urges, is what many singles have to deal with, especially when you know uh, you don't have a fallback position in a spouse. How do you manage that? How do you walk through life um, holding uh, yourself up to your decision for abstinence. This and many more are the things we'll be discussing on the show today. Don't go away. Stay with me and I'll be right back. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Better Half Show. We are discussing sexuality and singleness. Oftentimes, singles have a way of dealing with extreme state of horniness. Around here, we call it konji. And um, if you're married like me, you know that it's a bit of hope in the sense that you know you have a spouse that you can fall back on and you know uh, the sexual tension is dealt with. But for singles, it's a slightly different case, especially if you want uh, to practice abstinence. On the show today, I have a Soe and Noel. Uh, they're, they're both single and they, 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 they want to join me as we talk about you know the sexual frustrations and how they're dealing with konji if i can call it that again <laughs> so you're welcome to the show thank you pg and Noah, thank you for coming it's a pleasure all right PG. Uh, um how are you guys handling you know uh, uh this this thing that we're talking about this extreme state of horniness let me start with you uh, um nowhere yeah at the moment it's 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 easier than it used to be, but it, it wasn't easy. The pressure is as much. Sometimes I ask myself why we have to have these, you know, feelings, extremely strong feelings that that you can't help, you know. But um, some with over time and much failure, I think I've been able to find a way to to handle it. It's not easy though, but it's possible. And okay, to you, SOA, why abstinence at all? Why, why don't you just express your sexual feelings? Is that what you've been doing or are you abstaining? Why? Presently, yeah. I am abstaining. Okay. But initially, it was because of I'm mean, a Nigerian girl. I cannot get pregnant. My father will kill me. So the fear of not getting pregnant was like the beginning of wisdom, mm. you know? So I like this guy. And I want to spend time with him. And then I said, eh, if you, thought, if you get pregnant. So it was more of a try not to do something wrong. Because I don't want to support my parents. And I'm a Christian, you know, or society expects better from me. But I think I stopped struggling when I got to the point where I decided that I wanted to do this for me. So I swear, is, this is not mainly because of religion or what your dad you know, it's going to do to you knowing that it's warned you over and again not to get pregnant before marriage. And it's a decision that you made for yourself. Yes, uh, that, 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 that's fantastic. And you said when you made that decision, uh, you realized that it became a, a lot easier yes, it for you to be able to. Yeah. Okay. No, managing your sexual urges, has it always been a successful endeavor? Have you recorded success all the time? Have you found yourself, you know, faltering? You know, can you talk to us about that? I mean, I've faltered a couple of times, a lot of times, actually. Um, I'd like to say that, for me, I got sexually active at a very young age for some weird reasons, you know. I got maybe like five. I already started doing some things. And it was can a you, can you Can you tell us a little more about that at yes. five. I mean, I mean that's, that's a bit strange. Strange, really yeah. strange. But that's why I, I look at kids today and I don't take anything for granted. If you see certain signs and behaviors, you should check. So for me, I was in uh, a, an estate, a big estate with different kids. And so I had two female friends and um, they always came around. We always played and as kids. So one day you hear um, one of them said, Let's go and do bad thing. That's, that's exactly the term she used. And so we went somewhere and then... And these are small kids? Yeah, just like a few months older than myself. And so, so that's let's how... Let's say I, she's like six. 
Yes, she was like six. Let's go and do both of them were like six. Bad things. Let's go and do bad things. And they knew it was bad things. And I knew it was bad things. And so from time to time it kept happening. So I grew up being sexually active. I wow. knew it was that's the way of life for me. And it was But but at that age, you know, how bad can it get? Is it just about touching the genitals or it you could know? get worse if it's like if there's somebody who has been exposed to rape. Or somebody who has been, who has been abused. abused, that it could get so worse. That at, even at that young age, they know some things. They know a lot of things. I knew a lot of things before I even knew, wow. even before I was supposed to know those things. And so it was up until my teenage years that I started to tell the difference. The difference between that time and my teenage years was that, or is that, during the preteen years, it was something that we had to plan. We just yeah. remember, let's go and do this. But yeah. during the teen years was when I started to just stay on my own and I'm feeling uneasy, like, ah, what's all this? I feel like exp- so it's, having it's sex. almost becoming an addiction by the time you it were became, I was troublesome. Mm-hmm. My sister's friends would come to the house. You want to touch. You just want to, anywhere you go, and there's just space you take advantage of. And I got to university with that mindset. And university was a bit free, a bit liberal. And then just doing anything. It was at... 21, I told myself that, you know what, I need to check myself. So before 21, it was almost as if you carried some kind of horror around you I, that attracted um, sexuality and sexual expression, <laughs> some kind of magnet. You're just magnetizing it was too situations bad. and circumstances was, to make things happen. It was too bad. I, before 21, I felt I, was, I had a problem. Because the average kid in my, in my, in my primary school, the average boy would hate girls. But then, for me, it was different. I really loved the opposite sex. Like, but I would try to pretend once in a while. So it was at 21 I told myself that I know the kind of man I want to be. And there will be problems in my life if I don't check this thing. That's when I made this show for myself. So Noah, what you're saying to us is we should be careful about our assumptions about small kids. Very much. Because very, some, very much. some kids can be you know, open and exposed very early. And yes. it has repercussions. Yes. Later. Like when kids come to the house and you say, oh, he's your husband. Just, Go and play. play. <laughs> Leave them. They are, ki- they are not kids. Thank you. That, that's, that's very instructive. Now, uh, uh, Esoe, uh, many people have this assumption that um, women, you know, don't have that extreme case of uh, oniness and, you know, all that very often. It's only guys. Guys are moved by what they see, you know, and stuff like that. Is that necessarily true? It's not true at all because I get honey very often and I hear this a lot that men are moved by what they see but I think that some women like me are moved by what I see so I so I'm very careful about what I see I'm very it, it could be so even it's funny even um, things that should move a guy maybe a music video where girls are dancing anyhow can move me so I am very extremely careful um, of images that I see. So I, I had to learn to know why, why do I get like this often? Is this normal? Is it not? Now, in your interaction with your friends, your female friends, would you say a number of them are like you? Yes, they are, but to, to different degrees. Okay. So sometimes they just say, oh, I, I like this guy. You know, oh, you know why like I ask the question is that somebody is watching us and they may think, oh, it's just a story. Yes. Yeah. Is this just SOA? Is this no, just SOA? No, it's not. It's not. It's I, not. I just wanted no, to clarify women that. Women do, but they are more coded about how they express themselves or how they talk about it. So you're saying that guys are more expressive about it because there's societal concern that a guy can express his oniness more than when a lady is doing that, then she's the harlot of the community or something like that. Yes. Yeah. So women are much more coded about... But they're carrying fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're more coded about it, but it's there. <laughs> All right. Guys, uh, both of you have dated before. Yes. Now that you're trying to practice abstinence, how does it affect your dating life? Because you, you, you're dating someone who may want to check you out and see, you know, whether you're feeling them and all that. How do you explain it that, you know, I want to practice abstinence or we can't get there and stuff like that? Yeah. L- let me start with Noah. Okay. Um, at 21, yeah. when I started, 
I was seeing somebody at the time and it was difficult. It was difficult because she had been really sexually active. And then I brought it up somewhere along the line that this is what I'm trying to do. And she was like, okay, okay. And then I tried to put it in degrees. I'm like, okay, we can't have sex. She was like, okay, we can't touch. Okay, we can't. And when I said we can't kiss, because I know kissing is just the beginning. That's the, that's the, that's the first step to greater works, in quotes. But then, <laughs> but then she told me, I know if I would die. If you if you remove this one, I would I would die. But then I noticed that it didn't work because I that relationship led to we still eventually had sex, you know. And then I also dated someone um, last year, but that was a no no. So I was more careful from the beginning, from just the acquaintance stage. I told her that this is me. I tried to find out those things before I even declared my intentions. If she was on the same page as me, because I wasn't going to be making that same mistake anymore. So, so you, you made up your mind right now. You're not going to date anyone yes. who is not on the same page with you on that subject matter. No, no. What about you, Sway? <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's easy to, to abstain when you're single without a guy. But when you're in a relationship, it's hard. It's hard because the reason why you guys are even in a relationship is because... You're physically attracted to each other. There's chemistry. Yeah. As in, you want to touch each other. Yeah. And That's chemistry why... always leads to physics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if... And I'm a very mushy, Touchy, emotional person. person, you know. Yeah. I look forward to all the mushiness. Yeah. And then you now also abstain. So, first of all, I... So, are you saying you're going to be the trouble in the relationship? No, no. no. So, <laughs> because just... I already know my tendencies. Okay. I... I Try to date guys. I try to date guys who um, they, they do not say they, are, they want to abstain, but they mean it. Because okay. I've met people that are tongue speaking people that say they want to abstain. And, and they, uh, that, 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 they're very far from, <laughs> they're from very the far words from, of their mouth. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, if I see a guy who is touchy, even as a friend, a quinter, who is very touchy, I just know this one is a no no. Yeah, so I always look for that. If I find a guy who is very so, touchy so and all So a guy that. that is touchy is like a trigger for you. Yes. Kind of. All right. So uh, um, on that note, we're going to take a break. And when we're back, we're going to be discussing sexual triggers for singles. And I'm going to have a third guest on the show. And this discussion is going to get uh, very, very interesting. So don't go away. Stay with me and I'll be right back. Welcome back. It's a Better Half show, and we've been discussing sexuality and singleness. And I've been, you know, talking with two singles who have been very frank about uh, how they're managing the extreme state of horniness, which we call Konji. All right. So, Esoe and Noel, uh, let's talk about the practical things that aggravate, you know, your extreme states of horniness. Uh, let me start with you. Yeah, nowhere. One practical trigger for me is uh, what I see, whether it's in a movie or it's in um, in, in physical. Because uh, I remember a time where I was in a place and females were feeling a bit too friendly and they thought they could just undress in front of me. Such things are no no for me. Secondly is um, texting. It's, we text every day, WhatsApp and all that. That's what they call sexting. Yes, it eventually leads to sexting. You could just start as a mere casual text and yeah. then somebody starts to flirt and then the temptation to not dull the moment. I would text, flirt back and then she fl flirts again and then before you know it becomes something I can't control and it goes to sexting. And you, before you know you're sending pictures and of course that's like a dead zone on its own. And then the, the music sometimes, not so much music but... The times where if I want to pay attention to the words in the song, I could paint a picture, and that's not good for so me. So some very soulful songs, Some you know, songs that explain exactly how to, what how you are, how you are telling you the process. And how you are, yes. Even though you're not touching anything. I took you in, I, yeah. I unbuttoned you or whatever, and I just, all those kind of things. You start to paint a picture. For me, those are triggers. No, no. So, so what about you? What are those definite triggers? You know that this is going to put me into trouble. It just, it's like pressing some buttons, you know, on me. For me, it's just three things. I call it BFF. Books, films, and fine boys. Mm -hmm. 
BFF. Yes. Books? Films, Films and fine boys. And fine boys. And the worst of them is fine boys. Wow, fine yes. boys. Uh, but it's not their fault that they're fine, no? It's not their fault, but it has an effect on me. Okay, so yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it a bit. Talk about so it books, bit. I love reading a lot. Yeah. That's my primary way of learning. And then from reading inspirational books or books about your career or school, you read some romance novels, and then they are very explanatory in how they talk about the sex. And I'm just imagining what's going on. And then I so get you, honey. Yeah. So, so I had to first there of all, and you are, you, are, you are gone. I mean, in fact, I'm inside the room with them. <laughs> so I had to painfully stop reading romance novels. It was tough, but I had to say, before you kill me, let me just move on. So, so what you're saying is one of the ways you have been able to deal, you know, with this feeling is abstain from certain things. Entirely. Like reading intense romance novels. I don't, I don't even read Christian romance novels. I don't, I don't read, because it's still the same effect. Because some Christian um, nobody still believe in certain things as regards sex. So I just don't read it at all. Then okay. second one is films, movies. Yeah. And that is in the cinema is even the worst one because you can't run away. Yeah. But the ones I have control on is the one on my system. And there was a particular time I was giving a movie to watch. They call it Game, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Nobody warned me. The first episode, I said, what is this? <laughs> and they had given me season one to five. I download. I deleted it from my phone, my laptop. From I went to recycle bin to delete it. From my my sister gave me a flash. I deleted it on the flash drive. So that you are sure you, are, you won't go back to it. Because they had told me that it's addictive, and then they now had very serious sexual scenes. I'm like, are you trying to? This is not happening. <laughs> you know, for okay, three so days let, I wasn't okay. So I had to tell myself. I just put watching one episode. Yeah. I said no way. I am not I'm watching. I'm not doing this anymore. again. No, no. The All third right. one is fine, fine boys. boys. Yes, I'm interested in that one. Yeah. So, yeah. I meet a guy and the boy is fine. And first of all, I'm like, my man, I'm like, ah, this boy is fine. <laughs> and because he's fine, I, you know, I just want to spend time with him. I want to flirt a bit, you know. I give him my number. We start talking, and then maybe go on one or, one or two dates. So because he has an effect on me, I'm a, a little less guarded. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's not fine, and he has sweet mouths. That's just double trouble. <laughs> so you are already like jelly bean around that. Yeah, guy. so just... he doesn't even need to touch me. His words alone is killing me. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> that 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 has a way of you, you, making you know, me. Uh, uh, a lady described something to me one day. Um, she was in a lecture theater in a university, and the lecturer asked a question, and a young man answered the question. The young man was like five or six rows ahead of her, no, behind her. So she couldn't see the young man. But just the voice, just this young man answering this question with a baritone, you know, very masculine voice, she said, she was just telling herself, don't look back. Because if you look back and you see that guy, you are gone. Could it be that bad for you sometimes? Yes, <laughs> it can be. And then when I really meet somebody that takes me off very seriously, mm. um, one thing that's really helped, okay, Okay, I don't think we should go there. Or I just call my girlfriend. Ah, I met this fine boy today. This boy is fine. Ah, he's very fine. And they tell you, if you like yourself, run for your life. No, they don't tell me that, though. <laughs> they say, ah, just think about the boy now. <laughs> ah, what happened? You know, and then I give them the gist. Yeah. And like, I could see him again. You know, they want to know what's up. Fine boy. I'm single. Please, fine boys are supposed to be part of the package. So they encourage... But it's you just know. to know how to then manage this yes. fine boy trigger. Yes. Mm.